Wickham to follow Everton. Well, Wes, you got it right, mate. You called it. I did. I did call it, mate. Um, at half time, at half time, were you thinking? What were you thinking at half time, friend? Do you know what? I honestly don't know how we got away with the point there. <laughs> I really don't. Welcome, welcome to follow Everton. It's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, yes. <laughs> It's just relief, isn't it? I mean, it's like, I mean, I, I literally, I've just cracked open the can of Guinness and drank it in one, and, and I don't really drink a lot. <laughs> well, I literally just went boom, have it. <laughs> did you just say you really drink a lot? I don't know. I don't. Honestly, God, mate, I, I'm not a big drinker, but to, for me to down the Guinness in one, it's like I, I don't think I've ever done that before. Just so, so relieved when it when he when it went up. Nine minutes extra time, thinking, oh my God, there we go. And yeah, do you know what? Second half, I, I tell you what, friends, 60 minutes, three substitutes. He's yeah. been listening to us. <laughs> made the difference though, didn't he? Let's be honest. They made the, they made the difference. And um, fair, I mean, fair play, you know, they, they, they had to go second half and, and that's all you can ask, innit? Do you know what I mean? So you, all you can ask is that it, that so they have a go. You know, if they if they did have a go and got and got beat two 0 but but put in a bit of an effort, like you'd be like fair dues. You know what I mean? But it's like that first half was much of the same again, weren't it? Yeah, I'm playing around with me mic as well, by the way. So apologies, I've done nothing different. I'm just hoping that. Uh, I'm not coming through tinny, as Amy's just said. Apologies for the sound, but I've got like a top of the range microphone and I've not done anything different than I normally do. So let's hope we can get us till the end. Uh, thanks for joining us, by the way. The numbers are just going up and up and up and we can see people have stayed up all around the world to watch the Blues. And Even I've stayed up the to end. do the post-match. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, we, we, we went, there was no one down for post match, so that's why we volunteered, isn't it? I mean, at the start of the game, mate, I mean, I, I my heart to be head with divided. I caught, I said one nil with Beto. Let's just have a little chat about our talisman who got the nod at the start of the game. What did you make of Beto today? You know what, like. I didn't think he was he was terrible. Like he was willing to put himself in there and, and get tackles in and stuff like that. And he had he had a shot which was wayward, but at least he was willing to take it on. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> that, if if you if you've got strikers who are willing to have a go and they miss you and like you can you can sort of like let it slide a bit. Do you know what I mean? When you're constantly missing them. That's when you start getting annoyed, but at least he had the bottles to take it on. Uh, yeah, okay. So what about... Let's go through the team, shall we? Go on, yeah, I tell you what, let's, let's go from the goalie. Not a comfortable place for them to go, is it? Uh, St. James Park, as they absolutely despise them because of his association with Sunderland. Would that, if you were the goal, if you were Pickford, if you were Jordan Pickford, would that intimidate you, or would that urge you want to be like shut that, shut that noise out? Do you think it's possible? I think, I think he, like you know, when he first, when he first came to Everton, it was, it, it got to him. Do you know what I mean? And and he was making stupid mistakes, and but now I think it's sort of like, and you know what, the, the worst thing about it for me is that in the summer when you got the Euros on. To be all cheering his name for England, but obviously you know, to, fickle, to, fickle fans. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, obviously with his Sunderland connections, that's where he's getting the, the grief from. But so performance wise, he made a crack and save at one point there from he scored a decent striker. That's Shia lad, and he hit not Shia Isaac. Oh, stand yeah. by. There's the Chad the Chaddingtons. Yeah, we have uh, we have okay. we've got a hat trick of pundits. Chad's joined us over from the US. Okay, yeah, Chad. Chad. Oh, yeah. We're just Chad. We're literally just going to Chad are you with us, friend. 
Can you Chad. can you hear the boys, Chad? Chad. <laughs> Charlie Hotel Alpha Delta. Chad, come in, Chad. I feel like Alan Partridge. Chad. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it'll get a sound in a minute. Okay, so Pickford, decent performance. Hey there, mate. Chad's just messaged. Pick, yeah, Pickford's got man the match, didn't he? Um, pulled off some good saves. One at early doors from um, Harvey Barnes. Came straight out. Decent play, and, Barnes. Yeah, he's a good player. We, we, we sort of pinpointed him and Isaac as the danger men, didn't we, to begin with. Chaz, are, yeah. you, are you on, Chaz? Hang on. Stand by, everyone. We have a new boy all the way over from the US, Chad. He's a big Everton fan and he's new to the channel. First time we've worked together, Wes, Chad and I. So we were doing a duo and now we've got a treble. Uh, Michael Lenko, mate. Let's while you while you're tapping away, let's let's go from the back line. What do you think of Michael? I think he had a bit of a nightmare first half. Um, first half, yeah. along with a few what, others. Yeah, like he was all over the place defensively throughout that game, Rob. Like yeah. literally, like you know, we've got we've gone from being solid at the back to allowing like silly chance. Like do. Like one pass and you were through our midfield, like time after time after time. And I mean, we're sitting here like we've been beat, but we haven't. We've we've ground out a draw. Yeah, we're but, just analysing it now, mate, aren't we? That's that's what it's all about. You know, not nothing too in depth. Uh, nothing like on on the like Chris Lights does with it. No, with all his data. No, we're, we're just going to say, Michael. Was he shite or did he do the business? <laughs> he was shy first half. He, 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 Along he, with a few he others. He, he, so he, let's um, mark, let's mark, let's mark, let's give the marks as we're doing them. Let's give a mark. What, how many out of 10 for Pickford? Pickford probably get an eight. Absolute eight. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, am I still crackling? Apologies. Yeah. If uh, there's nothing I can do about me, mate, tonight, I've literally got the same microphone and I've done nothing to it that I would that I don't normally do so what am I like what am I coming through like there Wes yeah you, you are crackly you might be I too close to... to the mic or something Rob I don't know yeah I, what's that like I don't know how to rectify it mate I'm not I'm not a uh, very technical te uh, technical Rob so I wouldn't need let's go that. through it quick then if you can up, uh, up. Michael Michael Enko how many out of ten Michael Enko, I'll give him a six and a half. No, six give him a seven because he got he cleared that one off the line. He I'll was in the right position half to point. Yeah, yeah, seven. Yeah, you're right. We're on the same tracks. Let's go across the back. What about that, Brant Wait? I didn't think he had the greatest game tonight, to be honest. Yeah. I think he so was a wayward passing. Do you know, do you know, I just want to go back to um, Pickford, right? He, he gets an eight. He would have got a nine if he hadn't kept whacking the ball up to Beto, who was being man marked by Dan Bain. But every was single he, time. Was he told? Was he told to do that from my manager, or well, did he just do it himself? He, he had the he, tactics, he, don't he? He shouldn't. He shouldn't have been. Um, he shouldn't have been. Even if he was told to do that, he, he's the tallest man on the pitch. Dad, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm with you now. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, right. and am I still listen? Issue. If I'm still crackling, I'm dropping out. So, am I still crackling? You're not as uh, bad now. No, just a little bit. I it's I can understand you just fine. Yeah, but uh, some some of our punters out there they're not happy with my uh, 500 pound microphone. Oh, you should have gone for the uh, 600 pound one. I, I'm I, I'm in 10 1080 HD, but my microphone's crap. Yeah, but mate, we'll really... just go. With this. We'll just give pick for the eight. We'll just give Michael Enko a seven because he got one off the line. We're just on to Brands weight now. We're just marking our players before we go into a little bit more. So, how do you rate pick for tonight, friend? Yeah, 
Yeah, let me let me ask you this. I don't know if if you guys mentioned it, but uh, some of his distribution was a little questionable. The, the save that Mikalenko had to make off the line was a direct result of Pickford playing it long to the to the right. Terrible ball. They immediately turned it over and then nearly ended up putting one in the back of our net because of it. Uh, he, I mean, some outstanding saves by him. I, I, I think an eight is is right about there. He kept us in the match, and um, glad we have him. Yeah, yeah. Michael, so we, just, we just said that like he would have probably got a nine if it, if he hadn't kept two from the ball up to bet, so he was being marked by Dan Ben. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense if you if you're going to try and hit, um, you know, a, a player. Your striker who's being marked by the tallest man on the pitch, you know, but he gets he gets he gets a, he gets an A from me. We give Michael a seven. We give him a six and a half because he cracked that one off the line. We give him an extra half a point. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I he didn't offer us a whole lot going forward today, but I, I thought he was pretty sound defensively. So yeah, no issues there. Uh, but on to Brands right now. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to say a six. I, his his distribution was really poor. Uh, I thought throughout defensive positioning was fine. Um, he's always solid in the, in the back, though. But not, not an outstanding game. Certainly not the best we've seen from him uh, by a long. He's shot. allowed. He's allowed. Uh, he's allowed. Yeah. Performance. Yeah. 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 I, I I said that it, yeah it wasn't his best game and. Um, was kind of all over the place a bit defensively. He was like wafting the like the, for the goal. He just wafted his foot at the at, um, Isaac and got nowhere near it. But he, he was put in that position because Tarkovsky was way up the pitch and like if he just if he did being two yards back, it was an easy header clearance for him. But why he was there, I'll never know. I, I, no idea. Peter yeah, Duggan, switched off. you are so cruel, mate, on some of them players. Uh, Tarkovsky, out of 10, boys. Tarkovsky. I'll go for the six again. Yeah, I'll say a six. Should have had that goal early in the first half. Uh, sound back, for, the, back for the most home. part. Back home now, Bob. Yeah, Tarkovsky is six. Godfrey. You know uh, what? I think defensively they were all, they were all pretty poor, and I go I'd probably give Godfrey a, a six as well. Yeah, well, as I'm with you there, he didn't hurt us on corners this week for that's so that's the first time now in several games. Uh, offered us again nothing going forward. Uh, a couple of times that he get did get beat over the top, he was able to recover with pace. But really, I mean, why? Did, I, if only, I'm guessing it was only because of short rest. Otherwise, Coleman would have started. But I probably would have given that start to Patterson. I'll, I'll say a six. Yeah, well, this so is what we were saying, just, saying just before the, the start. We don't understand why he's he's kind of like putting Godfrey in as a makeshift right back when he's got two mm -hmm. sitting on the bench. Doesn't make sense. Garner Gay, boys. I thought he's done well tonight. Mm -hmm. Garner Gay done very well. Worth an eight? No, seven. Yeah, seven. seven I, I can't. I couldn't put him on the par with with Pickford. So no, not, but you, do you know? Do you know why? Do you know why I'm giving him an eight? Because he's he's not eating, is he? I'm giving him an extra point for playing footy and playing well on liquids. Yeah, but I mean that's that's me. Do, do we have to you give can. that point to Decore too? Yeah, it means you've got to give Decore extra points. You know, yeah, you know what? I mean, Decore, bless him. He he hasn't. He, he's kind of not been himself since he came back in the team. And Wes, you know, we've mentioned this. You mentioned it, mate. Us, us off the press, wasn't it? He's playing with an injury, so yeah. we did say we've got to cut him some slack because he's he's not he's not a hundred percent fit. That that's a fact. Yeah. The, 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 the fact of the matter is, you've got Godfrey there, who's not a right back. You've got Michalenko, and neither of them offer anything going forward. Michalenko done his best to try and get down down the wing, but Godfrey, Godfrey doesn't doesn't do nothing like that. So you you yeah. party of attacking, yeah, you party of your attacking forces 
is 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 down to your wing play and and if if you're not getting that overlaps or underlaps then you know you're taking a big massive chunk of your attack and prowess out of the game aren't you what's your thoughts on that yet I, I yeah he's not he's certainly not the same but you hate to think that if he's not 100 percent fit that you can't you can't play him because he he offers us a lot going forward but he's just he hasn't been himself lately he hasn't i i would i would probably start andre gomez next week or this weekend yeah. if we had to yeah we, we we thought he should have started tonight to be honest chad because he's yeah. he's probably the only player in our team that he can put his foot on the ball look up and see a pass see somebody making the run which is you know very very rare for actually our players to be making runs yeah he but would, let me i say think he would have i think he would have been ideal for beto because yes. Beto's got the pace to get in behind but he never he never he was that wasn't on the pitch with yeah. Beto for long was he did you notice our forward line outside of dcl to close this game was ashley young on the right mcneil left and and andre center that's the one of the slowest possible attacking lines that that i think we could we could even put on the pitch that they it left dcl we'll get to dcl it, it left dcl a little isolated at times you, i think we got to have more pace than that so i i don't know if that means bringing harrison back into the side on the right if you're going to play uh, andre centrally like that but there there's just absolutely no pace in that side at all if you if you if you bring andre into the side and yeah. they leave those wings as they were should we go across our midfield then ashley yeah. young out of 10. Do you know why he got the penalty? Yeah, the, yeah, the shot on goal as well. Um, and you know what? I don't think he's really, he's really done anything wrong. Like to be, to be fair to him, I'd give him, I'd give him a six and a half. Yeah, I'd give him a seven. I'm giving him an extra half a mark because you know what it's like to be old, mate. We're a little bit slower, aren't we? So he's getting half a mark extra for me because you know when you get to a certain age, you get written off. <laughs> I hate, I have to I think I've agreed with Wes on every single one of these. I'm gonna, I'll go six and a half for Ashley Young. Uh just a pro. A complete pro out there. Didn't do anything wrong as yeah. you mentioned. I would have loved if he it does seem like seem like he switches off sometimes like we mentioned leaving DCL a little isolated on that long ball that he played up. Uh no one no one came in for reinforcements at all. But he was I, he, he wasn't our issue tonight. I, and to be fair to him, he was played tonight probably to cover um, Godfrey with Ashley Barnes. Do you know what I mean? And to you know to keep to keep running up and down the pitch at 38, 39 years of age, and then get the penalty because he's he, you know he's in the box, trying to trying to be a nuisance, and and you know that Dummett's pulled him down in the box. If he's not if he's not in the box, it's not a penalty. So. Fair play you know, the you know, with our VAR experiences over the past X amount of years, with, did you think, nah, we're not going to get it, or were you quite confident, Chad? I, I thought for, I thought I didn't, I didn't really notice it live that much, and then when they saw the replay, when I saw the replay, it was a clear, clear pen, and and I almost thought like I think it had to be that clear and obvious for them to give it to us, because otherwise we wouldn't have gotten it. It had, I mean, it was a clear WWF WrestleMania like takedown. Uh, it was almost like a rock bottom, right? You know, he yeah. had his arm Maybe under Stone Cold Stunner. Yeah, st <laughs> stunner. <laughs> were you confident, Wes, that once it went to VAR and he had a look on the screen, we were we were going to get the decision? Yeah, yeah, because you know, if 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 it's if if a player's got another player in the headlock, I mean, you know. Maybe he's the culprit for Denise Barrett Baxendale. Dumb it. Maybe he was the culprit all along. You know what I mean? You figured it out. I'll, I'll have that. And we'll come on to the penalty in a minute because obviously that's uh, that's the point with, and we'll talk about our, our striker in a minute as we're going across the midfield uh, to Corey today then. You've gone all crackly again, Rob. Let me step back. With, haven't you? I, 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 <laughs> much better what about, much better what about the Corey? five yeah five 
But. Besides, besides the the shot that the ball was played in by Onana, a, a nice ball. We'll get to him. Uh, should have had, probably could have had a couple goals. Just didn't was on it. Wasn't on it today. Yeah. Five. Oh no. So this happened. This happened. This happened last season during Ramadan. Is that you know the the the, the energy levels were right down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the energy levels are right down, and you you can kind of understand it, but it's like we haven't got anybody else to put in there, have we? Do you know what I mean? Uh, when's just out of incest, boys? I, I don't. I, I'm showing me ignorance. When's the end of the the Ramadan for the for the likes of it's Gay in, and the, the Corey? It's in the next couple of weeks, I think. Right. So we've still. So we still got the Burnley game. Still got the Burnley game to consider for that then, haven't we? Uh, April yeah, 9th. So April 9th. April 9th. Okay. Thank yeah. you for that. So Apologies for my ignorance. Uh, what about an hour of that, boys? Could, yeah, put a couple of good tackles in. So I'd, I'd give him a six, me personally. I don't think he, once again, he, he flatters to deceive, I think, a lot of the time. For us. Yeah. yeah. For us, yeah. Amazing for well, Belgium, well, but then he's playing. How many out of ten chance for oh, I, uh, Mr. Onana? Yeah, I, I, I liked, I liked Amadou Onana tonight. I, I would say a seven. Uh, won a couple really nice tackles. Got flagged for a penalty that that I don't think he deserved. I think she actually got ball on that one. Um, made some really nice passes too down down the middle and and, and tried to be progressive with it. Like I mentioned, he he fed to Corey and where he should have Corey should have put that home. So I'll, I'll say a seven for for how I'm doing on him. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll I'll stop some friends there. I'm six and a half, so I'm right in the middle of you. What about McNeil? McNeil out of ten, boys. Jazz. Yeah, I'll go. I'll, yeah, I'll take the lead on this one. Yeah, I thought he did a really nice job in the first half, uh, coming central. Uh, you know, inverting from the, from the left. Um, played with a lot of vigor. Um, he doesn't, he just doesn't offer a whole lot of pace. So he's not able to beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, didn't have, he wasn't able to get as many crosses into the box as I, I think he usually does. Uh, I, like a six and a half for Dwight. I think he, he, he kind of started off all right and he was drifting into the middle a bit. And then, um, I think he, like he was, he was putting tackles in at the ends, and he was—you could tell—he was dead on his feet. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was still putting the effort in. So I'll probably give him a six and a half for the effort to the ninety. You know what I mean? Or the ninety-ninth yeah. minute. I'll I'll give him a seven on that. Just be, but just based on what you've just said. Uh, when when you when you're down and you're feeling knackered, but I still felt he offered something. So yeah. Uh, have I missed anyone else across the middle there? Uh, uh, James Garner came on. James Gart. No, that, he came on. He was the sub. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's do the subs as well before we get to our strikers. James Garner, did he make a difference when he came on, boys? Chad? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Uh, it certainly should have scored. The the post was cruel on on that one. Uh, that was. I thought that was the best he's looked in weeks. I don't know what, what you guys thought. I, I thought he, you know, for only playing 30 minutes... I thought he deserved a seven. He looked refreshed, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he, he definitely he, he definitely came on and made a difference. He, he 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 got the ball and he was looking to drive forward, which is you know this is what you you, you ask like the last the last few weeks he's not really offered a great deal. He, he's been like everybody else, like got the ball and he wants to pass it off backwards or sideways. Um, tonight when he got the ball, obviously he was. He was told by the manager to get on, start driving forward, and he was unlucky with a shot that at the post. And I mean, this is this is the story of our our lives, and it as Evertonians, like we're just not a lucky team. We're just not. We just don't get the luck. We don't get the luck of the draw. It doesn't. We don't get the rub of the green, do we? Never do. Sometimes though, whereas I, I get what you're saying, a, a trillion percent. But sometimes you're just going to make it unlucky, haven't you? It's kind of life, isn't it? Yeah, but he do, he done all the hard work, Rob. Are you talking, and, about, and, you talking about are you talking about being an Evertonian, the Everton team, or are you talking about an individual? I'm talking about James Garner when he hit the post. Yeah, and then what did you follow up then by saying the rub of the green? Yeah, yeah. So you just sorry, mate. You're just talking specifically about James Garner or about Everton? 
because well, they never get the rub of the green, do we? Yeah, yeah. No, but 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 us in general this season, like you look at you look at the other day with the the, the DCL penalty, and you know everyone everybody under the sun has said that's a penalty, even. Even the you know Dermot Gallagher on ref watch on on Monday, who normally agrees with refs, said it's a penalty. We it's yeah. another 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 decision, bad decision has gone our way. That yeah. shot today, that you know, nine times out of ten, it's fine in the bottom corner of the net, but comes off the inside the post and bounces out. You're like, you know, when are we going to get our bit of luck? Like, uh-huh. there's a certain yin yin and yang yin and yang. Is that the to to Everton's luck, it's like it's like the, against Bournemouth, we get a penalty or we get a, a goalkeeper error for you know, the, the equalizer, and then we have an own goal, you know, that costs us the the point here or that moment today where uh, where Tarkovsky clears it and then it nearly and then he nearly scores an own goal. It's almost like if, if we don't if, if we don't have any bad luck, we have no luck at all. Uh, there's there certainly doesn't ever seem to get we get anything that clearly goes in our in our way. What yeah. did you think of Gomez, boys, when he came on? I think he was a, like a level head, what we needed. Because there was so, the, the, there's no composure in our team whatsoever. Like, there was, a, there was, yeah, there was a, there was a, a put, one point in the first half where Ashley Young, and obviously Ashley Young, 38, 39, has been around the game for, for donkey's years. And he put, he put a pass through. Instead of, instead of putting his foot on the ball, he was under no pressure. Put a f- first-time pass through into the box. And there was nobody there. And I thought, just show a bit of composure. Put your foot on it. Look up. See where the runners are. And then pass the ball. No, don't just pass it blindly. You know what I mean? Where's Gomez? Come on. And he was he, f- foot on the ball, looking around for, for runners. And, and, you know, nine, 99 times out of 100, he was finding the, an Everton shape. That's all we need. Let's get on to uh, our strikers then before we talk about some other things. Uh, Beto, how would you rate Beto out of 10 today? Chad? <laughs> we, in our chat, I had said if Beto could just play football, he'd be quite a, like, he'd be quite a good football player. And it's, and it's the truth because everything that he does well, you know, the endeavor, the vigor, the, the pace, the speed, the aggression, just the will, it's all there. And then if you ask him to to be technically sound in any part of the game whatsoever, he's incapable of, of doing it. And then Dominic Calvert-Lewin is the complete other side of the coin. It, Dom seems to be playing everything very safe, just just not willing to take any chances at all. His his break was exactly that. He could have cut inside, tried to get a shot on goal, and said he holds it up and decides, hey, I'll just try to win a corner here. It's if we could just bring them two together, we would have a really nice player. Uh, Beto was, so, I thought Beto was infuriating. Give him, yeah, I give him out of 10. A five, a five. That's all, yeah, five for Beto. Uh, I'll probably Amanda, go. Amanda, thank you very much. Thanks very, very much, Amanda. Very, very nice of you. Thank you. That goes towards that, will go towards getting my new crackly mic sorted. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think you've got a loose wire there, <laughs> and, and and your mic's knackered. <laughs> it's, only, it's only two weeks old. Um, yeah, so five, Amity, would you give Beto tonight, my friend? You know what? I, I thought like his endeavour was there, and he was willing to put himself about. So I, I don't think I'd be as harsh as to give him a five. I think I'd give him a, a six. I'd give him a six because. He was six. trying the lad. You know what I mean? I think he really was well. trying the lad. Yeah, God loves to try, they say. Becky, Becky's on. Oh, hi, All Becky. Becky. Somebody further up the, the, um, the comments there made a good point about Ashley Young when he got when he got fouled in the box. He showed out showed DCL how to appeal for a penalty. He was screaming at the ref. Absolutely screaming at the ref. You know what I mean? And and again against Bournemouth the other day, Cavalier just kind of shrugged his shoulders and say, oh well we ain't given. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, we spoke about that pre-match, didn't we? It's because uh, when they all go down, they all scream. It's quite yeah. quite alarming, to be honest with you. Yeah. How they scream so loud? It's like, what what are you doing? Because where's we know they never used to do that years ago, did they? If it's someone clattered you, you didn't want to be seen to be weak and make a noise. Even even if your leg was broken, you'd want to get up and try and walk on it or play on it. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, football's football's changed now, and like the thing, the thing is, is that Ashley Young by because the ref didn't give that as a penalty initially, mind. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, by him screaming at the ref, he's got the VAR thinking, and then obviously the ref's gone to the screen, seeing what's gone on, and give the penalty. So you know, if they'd have just walked away and gone. It doesn't put doubt in the referee's mind or put doubt in the in the VAR's mind. Because apparently, I don't know whether this is true, don't get me wrong. The other day, uh, the DCL penalty, right? It was it was apparently it was sent to VAR, but but Michael Oliver, who has openly admitted that he hates Everton, turned around and said, I don't need to review it. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not nice, is it? Let me ask you fellas this about Beto though, before we, we move on to, to DCL. I don't know if it was the first half or the second half. It's going to completely escape me. But he actually won a ball against the against the center back and was in on goal. And then he gets kind of pulled down from the back and then just dives, hoping to get a foul instead. And then that nothing was given whatsoever. And, and I just screamed at my television. I'm like, you actually had him beat. Why why dive and, and try to get a foul there? I, it's just yeah, one thing I don't understand a, about him. It, what, he did get pulled on the shirt. I don't know what I don't know. Was you watching it on Peacock or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, so, you, so we over, had USA here. Yeah. Yeah. So over here we had the TNT Sports Discovery Plus, and and the commentator turned around and said he did get a pull on his did get a pull on his shirt, but it was on the blind side of the ref. But as as the ref, you got to be thinking, well, what why? Like what? What exactly? What you just thought, Chad? Like he had the man beat. Why would he go down? Do you know what I mean? So maybe that's maybe that's more on him because because if he hadn't have gone down pretty easily, he probably would have gone being in on goal. You know what I mean? But he, he chose to go down to try and get the free kick and and got nothing in the end. Mm-hmm. Also, he's he's what six four? Like I can't, I mean, he's he's a massive massive human being probably one of the strongest most powerful people out there he can't go down they're never going to give him uh, something that would look like a that would look like it would barely knock over gone uh it, it just it's it they don't they don't referee it the same way for those two players no okay boys the penalty what was your thoughts when that ball went on the spot what was going through your oh, mind Chad? oh oh hang on what about what about chimitty Oh yeah, go on then. Let's, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Apologies, Mister Chimitty, for leaving you out. I, I'm like, I, I'm trying to get to DCL because he scored a goal. Apologies, yeah, Ch- Chimitty. Yeah, do you know what? <sighs> Could have got sent <laughs> off, I suppose, in the first couple of minutes. Yeah, I think he threw <laughs> threw a dodgy tackle in, but he's, you know what? he's a little, show willing. He's raw. Yeah, yeah. He's he's he, he's a young lad. He's he's a little bit raw, and I guess that you know endeavour to want to come out and, and prove yourself but bloody hell he could have been uh, could have been the quickest uh, booking and sending off in the uh, yeah this season well, uh, I've got to be how honest many though, with... how uh, many for Chimitty I go I go a five and a half yeah at, at six he really didn't have a whole lot of time to, to do anything but there's something about him I like I, I feel like we're gonna we're gonna see something special out of him uh, I'll nice. say six yeah. yeah, I'll go with a six as well. Okay, friends, the ball is put on the spot. What are your thoughts, Chad? Flapping it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a, I was optimistic he was gonna, he was gonna score it. Hey, we just, what are they? We can't have, I mean, we can't miss both of the penalties that we would win this season. So I was feeling really good about it, and I knew that uh, I, I felt good about Dominic Everloo and taking it too. If it would have been Tremidi, I would have been a little more nervous, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was excited because I thought well, there was a real chance we were going to get a point here. What was your thoughts, Wes? Were you thinking this is the, oh, this is his moment? 
Or uh, did you have any doubts? Of course I had doubts. But like our record our record hasn't been um, hasn't been great on penalties, has it lately? <laughs> you know, so um yeah, I've gotta got be I've gotta be honest, my ass was twitching. And, do you know what I, do you know what? I was at when at the back of the net, I was so made up for all the Everton fans that had travelled up in the top tier of the stand where they just shove it in a corner. That's that's where my thoughts went. I thought, you know what? You go week in, week out, and you've actually got something to cheer about. Yeah. And he and he said he said that the um he said DCL at the end uh, in his interview that um because the the the, the you know the reporter asked him if he felt nervous and all that and he said no it felt all right he said and then he said oh you know where's he going so long without a goal and, that, and he said look you don't need to tell me that you know what i mean and so he obviously the press he knows the pressure's built building on him yeah you know and it must be massive on him that could just could have... make the difference between now and the end of the season couldn't it really it could i don't think it will but it could well, I'm going to say it will. <laughs> this is I the beauty it. in it. We have a little bit of, come on, you say, I say, you know he said, she said. But you know what, right? The annoying thing about it now is Dice will probably put DCL back in from the start again. Whereas, like, I think he needs to give Beto a start, a run of starts. And, and I think he will score goals. And I think if, if he plays Gomez, like... Gomez might not have 90 minutes in him, but he might have 60, 65, 70. You know what I mean? And I think he'd be a great foil for for Beto, you know, slotting little balls through for him to run on, run on to. But you know it's not going to happen. He's going to stick with the same people. Yeah. Wes, let me ask you this. Would you would you rather see a, a DCL Trimity pairing up top or be or Beto it's in a singular central position? Um, or Beto, what about Beto and TCL as well? What throw that permutation in? Yeah, that that just doesn't hasn't felt like it's worked in the the few times that we've seen it. So I was a little intrigued when when they closed with Tremidi and DCL. Just I was wondering if that was something Dice might explore going forward. I think Chimiti Chimiti at the moment he's too he's too raw to to be thrown in kind of at the deep end. He's he's kind of like. You know, an impact sub or whatever, um, but doesn't make an impact. <laughs> um, That's kind of the point. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, I don't know whether the DCL Beto combination because we've had it. We had it once before in the FA Cup, didn't we? And that didn't really pan out very well. Um, was it the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup again? I know it was a cup game anyway, and. Um, but that didn't really pan out very well playing a four four two. Maybe if you played played like a Beto in the Decore role and and play DCL obviously as a striker, maybe that might work. So play play like Beto as a false nine kind of thing. Uh, just a quick one there, but Israeli Blue was asking how to become a VIP a VIP member there, uh, Wes. Who was? Israeli blue, our, our new friend. Oh, you got you got to go to YouTube, I think, haven't you? Just just a little bit further up. Yeah, I think you got to go to YouTube, and um, there's a, a so, link on there. Yeah. So if go. you're if you're in the background there, Ryan, can you just send him the details, and we'll put that one up. Out. It's, it, it's there on the screen, Rob. Is it on there? Oh yeah, it's put up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you what, friend. You two boys carry on because there's something wrong with my mic. I'll tip out and we'll do the you and I, Wes, we'll do the what's the name tomorrow? Um the Wednesday, Wednesday night, night blues. blues. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, worries, oh. Mate. Nice one, Chad. See you, Wes. See yeah, you tomorrow. Okay. I'll leave I'll leave it on in the background until you've finished it in case I end the stream. All right, mate. <laughs> See you later, Rob. <laughs> is he just going to leave his camera on? I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, it's I think gone. Someone just, I think it was. I think it was Ryan in the background. <laughs> yeah. I I wonder if Ryan if Ryan is going to join us. I he uh, he was pretty heated 
on uh, on Twitter. I I'm very curious to hear what his thoughts would be after Who watching was? that whole. Ryan Ryan was Ryan was a, a, had lots of thoughts on Twitter. I think he's in. I think he's in the background. Ryan, do you want to come in? Come on, Ryan. Let's go. <sighs> there he is. There he is. Hello. Apologies. I've only just got this computer today. Finally got a computer that works after several months with no computer and i hope next time you see me i'll have a good microphone an actual room to talk in other than a sofa and a proper camera but for now i hope this it will do no you sound great actually if, if that's just the onboard microphone that's gonna work thanks all right what did you think where do you start with that? I mean, the first, <laughs> the first half, I'm watching it, and I'm I'm like, what am, what are we doing? What are we doing? What is the plan? What are we doing? Are we engaging up the pitch? Or are we dropping off? I didn't quite understand because for me, we had a few players pressing, then we had a few players dropping quite deep, and then we had this huge gib, huge massive Titanic ship uh, of space in the middle of the pitch. So basically, what that meant was when we went long. If we lose the first ball, we've got no one near for the second ball. Then the defence are pushing up and they're playing around us. It wasn't a cohesive Newcastle have got four in the back line. We're four on four. We're then backing up man for man. We're winning the ball at the pitch. It was a bit disjointed. And it meant that Newcastle could play it out to the fullbacks who were pushed high and wide. And, um, and really cause us some problems tactically by doing that. And it was only when we got in their faces in the second half and showed real genuine aggression that we looked like making something happen. And I think the change to substitutions made a big difference because we went from this stupid long ball and, and, and there's a time to play long ball, but it's not a straight long ball into your centre forward or Pickford passing it to a, to a fullback who's got his back to goal and then coming back and uh, us and nearly scoring. But it was the fact that we were able to mix it up and, and play through the lines. Um <laughs> And, and play through the midfield with Andre Gomez, James Garner, and make things happen that way. It wasn't as predictable. So it was a better second half. I, I, I made a lot of points there, but I'm sure we can expand on them. No, I think you're I think you're onto something though, because if you're gonna play direct with Beto in, he's just not capable of winning aerials in the same way DCL is. So we're never gonna win those second balls. That's why I, I think we really would would benefit from seeing Andre Gomez in with Beto, so he could play him through the channels and and hopefully, I don't know, beat beat a man and 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 slot one in. Um, do you think that's something that we we can see Ryan going forward? Do you think we could see Andre Gomez and uh, and Beto together? There's going to be a time to play him, and there's a time not to play him. The time to play him is when we're trying to unlock a defense. Um, and I don't see how you could not put your best footballers on the pitch. And in terms of footballing ability, he's light years ahead of some of the others. But it's where and when you're playing. You've got to pick your moments. I think at home in certain games when you need, for example, a team that comes to Goodison, sits behind the ball and waits for us to make a mistake. You give it to Andre Gomez. You need to have him in the team because he's got the pass. He's got the intelligence. He keeps the ball. He doesn't give it away. Whereas in a away game... Possibly today against Newcastle, I can see why you wouldn't start him. But I think we just needed to show a lot more bravery with the team selection. When he made the substitutions, it made us better. And we didn't have a defensive midfielder on the pitch by the end of it. Because you got James Garner, who was basically playing as an eight and being asked to get forward and break through the lines. Yeah, I think I think um, Gomez would be ideal against Burnley, I think. Because because they might come come to Goodison and sit sit behind the ball. I don't think company has them set up that way. I don't think he's capable of because he's because he's got this um, you know this ex Man City player head on where he thinks that they should be playing open and expansive football, and a lot of the time that you know they're getting beat. So I don't think he's going to come there and maybe park the bus, but. I think Gomez can can unlock and pass that thread them ball through the through the midfield and but today like today Everton's midfield like one pass and we, the Newcastle were through our midfield like nobody's business weren't they? Can we make make it very clear that this is still an acceptable unacceptable 
the fact that we've managed to claw back a point in acrimonious circumstances through luck. Yes, we did hit the post, but Newcastle should have scored from the carved this open. This is Everton's longest ever winless run in 140, 147 years. It's That's not true. Oh, That's I not thought true. it was. No. 1957, they mentioned it on the TNT Sports. 1957, when they went on their 13-game run without winning. So that was the last. That was the last time he. he went I on. thought we were joint. It was a joint. We were equaling nope. a joint record. No, it was. And then we were beating um, it today. No, um, Sean Dyche. If we'd have got beat today, Sean Dyche would have equaled Mike Walker's record, or he'd, he'd already equaled uh, Mike Walker's record. So, um, so Mike, I think he's actually beat Mike Walker's record by only drawing. Oh dear, I, I got my facts completely wrong. But I suppose it, it it doesn't make it any better, really. For me, it's still Premier League yeah. the longest winless runs. Shameful. So, uh, our, um, our old mate there has just said, "Is I, it uh, I, Yeah, the longest in the Premier League era. Is he coming on? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not set up. Is he? Well, neither am I. Um, there's so much. There's just so much in that game. I felt like <clears> pulling <throat> my hair out. Um, in utter disbelief how we, we do the same. I mean, let's talk about the goal. I'm sure you've done this and I will watch it back. But bloody hell. You're playing a long ball. You've got one defender loitering behind all the others, 15 yards behind everyone. You lose the first header. I mean, come on. It's absolutely brainless. Well, as we, I said that in the chat. Ever. Said it in the chat, didn't I? Like, what was Tarkovsky doing there? Like, he, two two steps back, and he he heads that out without a problem, and he's like so far up the pitch. I don't understand why you're making it into a fifty-fifty sort of thing. We did it in the second half. Pickford gets the ball. He's booting it wide right to someone nationally young who doesn't want the ball with his back to goal with someone in touch tight to him. He hasn't got the strength, nor pace, nor skill, nor tenacity, or, to, or anything to try and get away with anyone from anyone. Yeah, you're literally punting it to him, playing for 50-50 where it's completely at a disadvantage for those reasons. And then it nearly ends up in our goal, cleared off the line. I mean, they gave him man of the match, but come on. He made some good saves, but where's your brain? This is the thing. Yeah. I, I thought Everton did show a bit of brain later on when McNeil took a really good tactical foul, tactical yellow, although he should never have been in that position because he was running through on goal and should have done better with it. But he's allergic to using his right foot. But I, what, what I would say is we did show a little bit of brain there, didn't we, with, with the tactical fouls. But why does it take you to be in such a such position of adversity to kind of show that fight and that willingness and that determination and that aggression and that desire to do anything. Yeah. We didn't see it in the whole first half. I, I, I would love to know what they said in the, in the changing room in the, at halftime because they came out as a, as a different side in the second half. I thought a side that actually showed that they wanted to, to, to actually try to win and, and get something out of that game. The first half, they they looked like they were going to be completely content to to keep it tight and and try to get out with a nil nil. And I think they went in knowing at halftime that that wasn't going to be an option for them anymore. I, I hope Dice ripped their ass at halftime because they played terribly um, and then certainly came out with more vigor. And I, I like the subs. We had a couple comments in here that the subs saved the the game for us. And and I, I have to do just I have to completely agree. I didn't like them at first because it was subbing like for like. And it just seems more of the same. And I didn't think we were going to get anything out of that. But uh, we did see a change in personality, at least, for, for those that were on the pitch. And, and I liked what we saw in the second half. Uh, this is a sort of game where you've seen Everton be on the other end, where you are 1-0 up and you have the chance uh, to make it 2-0. And then the other team gets a draw and you're looking at this. So Newcastle are going to feel quite... Furious, to be honest. I mean, it was the kind of, they had a lot of reserves, but they'll be furious. They were a whisker away. I mean, that offside, I was ready at 2-0 to, to pull that trigger on Daesh and just say, I've seen enough. Because you're doing 13 or 14 games without winning. You sleepwalking. I mean, that's 13 games. It's, 
it's a third of a season. You don't, it's unheard of. A yeah. third of a season without winning a match, with no sign of it changing, with no ch- style of play. I mean, I did the match preview with Chris, which was a great match preview. And I said, we've got a few objectives in this game. Newcastle have got two threats, Bruno Gamarai and Isaac. What you don't want to do is let Isaac run at you, 1v1, turn or running behind. What did we do? It took us 50 minutes for Jared Branthwaite to realise he had to be touch tight. And I said on the preview, when Isaac gets the ball, touch tight. You can feel his bollocks for all I care. You've got to be really close, up and personal with him. And 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 don't let him turn and run at you because his dribbling skill is is phenomenal. And Gimara, if you let Gimaraes get the ball and turn and take it and dictate play and spread it wide, you're going to have all sorts of problems. It took us way too long to deal with that. That was the defensive thing that took us too long to react to. The offensive problems I had were the set pieces. I said, could we be more threatening from set pieces? I don't think we were. I think our set pieces were poor again, allowing Newcastle to. It's, the, it's not even the set piece. It's how we react to when it breaks down. The setup, the security you have for the second ball and the third ball. You know, it's how you suffocate a team and, and smother them. And I, I feel like Newcastle are really understood that they could kind of just mop it up with the big, powerful centre-halves and just take it and run. How could we cause them threat? Well, for some reason, we kept playing the straight long ball. I mean, Sean Dyche said in his post-match, if you put it behind a centre-back's head, you know, the, to chase on to, it's hard. But yeah, when he we play these long balls, we're playing them into, into strikers. You know, we're playing, it almost seems aimless. It doesn't seem like we're doing it for them to chase. I didn't yeah, really like get that. I didn't feel like the long ball thing worked at all. Yeah, but like, like I said, you know, Pickford's kicking it up to Beto who's going up against Dan Byrne. And, and it's kept constantly happening. And you're like, is, why, well, why don't you boot it, boot it up against, and and let them like drop onto Sha or um, that craft? But you know, change it up. We've got a yeah, no, really good point. This um, don't want to dominate your stream, but you you you, this is really important, and and I'm attributing this to to something that might I don't want to come across wrong with this because I don't mean any harm by it, but. The Muslim faith players who are observant of Ramadan have got utmost respect for whatever they believe in. It does affect. I mean, if you go and play football or go, Chad, if I sent you to do your job <clears> on an empty <throat> stomach, you just cannot perform to the same mental capacity. There's just no way you could do it. And 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 this is elite level football where you've got your two players in your most important position, arguably. You've not had a bite to eat. And that is difficult, and that will affect players. Because Wes, if you remember last season, we had yeah. Ramadan bang in the middle of the season over a long period. It might have been December, even or it was really imperative, and we couldn't win a game. Yeah, the, the 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 funny thing about it was is that they obviously had a break so they could break the fast That's during insane. the game. But yeah, but he's done it during the game, and then and then he took them all off. <laughs> he took all the three Muslim players off. He, he might have been let, uh, better bringing them on. I'm not saying the substitutions were fine in the end and were successful, but maybe you bring them on once they've had some food. Possibly. I don't know. As soon, how it as, works, the sun went, as, soon as the sun went down, that was it. They could have they could have some food and some water and whatnot. Um, some some liquids as the, when the sun sets, that's them they're allowed to eat. But um, but then they like, proceeded to to drag the three of them off after they, they'd had a, a bit a bit of scoff. My my main concern now is the games we play are against teams. Yes, we already beat Bournemouth and Newcastle this season. So we've proven we can beat them and we didn't again. But my worry now, we play Brentford, we play Forest, we play teams that losing to would be criminal because we lose to Forest. We're giving them three points on us. It's not about us losing the three points and not getting three points. We're giving them three points. I'd almost rather say right now, I'll take a draw against Forest, a draw against Brentford and a draw against Luton because giving them the points would kill us. Um, They've just had a massive three points tonight, though, against Fulham. They just, you know, 3-1 and that's going to give them a massive boost for the rest of the season that they can get out of it. You know, realistically, you know, 
they 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 shouldn't be in the position where they can win enough games to get out of it if they'd have had the points deducted that we'd have got. You know, but it is what it is. So they have to um you know, we, we we just have to beat the you know, the teams that are down there around us. Simple as that. And and hopefully this this point that we've got tonight, even though it's been against the depleted Newcastle team, will give them the, the a bit of confidence going forward. So you can you can only hope, can't you? I just look deflated, to be honest. Um, I, I just think you were, we're going through the motions at the moment. And I think the, the second appeal, let's not go there, but, you know, is probably in the back of the mind or whatever we do. Let, let's just, just before I, um, just before I don't do anything, have a, <clears throat> if you're on, have you're on X, which there is, um, yeah, I was thinking just before I do something, but I'm not doing anything. If you're on X, and I know there's 302 of you watching on X right now, do us a favour. You're on your mobile device. Go on YouTube, on your app. Type in Follow Everton. If you can't spell it, then I'm seriously worried about you. It's very easy to spell. F-O-L-L-O-W, Everton, as in the football team. And click on the YouTube channel and click subscribe. What should we do? Click subscribe. That's if you're on X. I don't mind you watching on X, but let's get some subscribers on. We're up to 2612 or 2614. So come on, help us out um, and subscribe. And if you'd like us so, so much, um, you can become a member. You can become a member. Um, do you really want me to put you on camera? No, please don't. Do it. Uh, you don't want to see air stuff in the face again. <laughs> <laughs> You can become a VIP, and the VIP membership is either – it's basically a donation which goes into the fund which helps us. Um, and we'll, really what I want to do at the moment is is renew the subscription on the trial for the tactics board that Chris Leitch had because I thought that was brilliant how he was able to bring up the, the tactics and annotate it. So if you want to support us, youtube.com forward slash – Follow Everton forward slash join on a desktop or mobile device with Safari browser or another oh, browser. And um, so that's what you need to do. And you can choose. I will, I will literally, I will not batter my fiance, but I will have you removed from Just the room. Follow, follow Everton. No. Subscribe, follow Everton. Do I, do you want to be no. put on camera? So be quiet. You can't get the staff. Get the, this is what I said. I need an office. I'm not set up for it. Ninety nine p a month or two ninety nine a month, depending on what you can afford. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Now you be quiet in front of three hundred and sixty five people. Don't need. We'll have a we'll have a cracking Christmas night out. <laughs> you can follow Everton, or you can follow follow Everton. It, it, either one works. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Toffee's one of our VIPs. Thank you so much. I am the boss. Not in this house. Yeah, right. I'm not so really sure about that. Go somewhere else if you can't be normal on, on stream. Awesome. Chad, change the <laughs> yes. Hey, so I have a, I have a, I have a question for you because you mentioned our set pieces today. What the hell did they work on for three <clears throat> weeks when they when they went to Portugal? Because they came back against Bournemouth and. I think we saw the short corner. So they worked on the short corner for three weeks with McNeil actually shooting with a, a ball with his right foot and nearly scoring. And and then we didn't even see them go short today at all. I think the idea was that that everybody knows we want to go far post on the corner and, and it, hopefully Tarkowski is able to head one through, which which he nearly did today. And that was the whole point of implementing playing it short is to kind of unclog that that congestion at the back post. And then they didn't even do it today. Um, I, I just don't understand how Dyche is is clearly out of ideas here. Um, yeah, but he, did, he didn't um, he didn't he didn't work on anything in uh, in Portugal, Chad, because he stated after the Bournemouth game he had one day's training to get ready for that match. Yeah, so. Just what was the point, the whole point in the Portugal trip? Like Mr. Toffee said, the only thing they worked on in Portugal was the Sands. 
You know what I mean? It's, they all look like David out. Dickinson when they come back. Yeah, got you know who David Dickinson is. They got a holiday for being rubbish. Yeah. They got a reward. They didn't work. I don't know what they can work on. I think the number one thing for me to work on is your finishing. You're just your 1v1s and your, your, your match day scenarios of turning and shooting. And, and, and I, I don't know. You think to yourself, you think to yourself, that James Garner one had gone in. That's all if Sands and Butts. But if that James Garner one had gone in and we'd have got the penalty, we'd have got to come away with three points there. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just yeah. beggar's belief. We should, I mean, realistically, we robbed the point. You know yeah, I mean? we didn't, we didn't deserve, we didn't deserve three points, Wes. We, we probably deserve, deserve none. Though. Did we even deserve a point? No. No. But, but, you know, we're going to take it. And and the the, the 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 sad thing about it is it was against a heavily de depleted Newcastle team. If you Newcastle know, had had Anthony Gordon and Almiron and all these other players, I think they would have steamrolled us um, because of the spaces we leave behind. Because when we do press, we're leaving huge gaps still because we're not going as a group. We're going as like three and fours, and then leaving Ben Godfrey stood. Be there was a, an example in the in in the first half where. The ball is punted, uh, punted long. It falls to Ashley Young, who doesn't have the pace to get away or the strength. He then loses the first ball. And then he's trying to press their left back to win the ball back for us. And all their left back has to do is a straight vertical four-yard pass into the player in front of him. And he can take it and turn and run at you. Why is Ben Godfrey not up the pitch on his back so that when Ben God uh, when Young wins it, he's got support, or when he loses it, he's backed up to stop them playing out and around us and through us? I don't get it. That comes from the coaching. That comes from the manager. He picked the eleven. The eleven was wrong. He picked the style of play. He set us up to contain them. But you've got to have some threat. You listen. We were two nil down. I don't care what you say. We got away with that. You've got two defensive fullbacks. You've got two defensive wingers. Okay, McNeil's got a little bit more about him, but Young is a right back playing on the wing. You've got two CDMs. How many defenders you want? We're not an army. You've got to have something. You know. But this is this is the thing, right? Is that it was so easy for them to get between the lines, and we still had two CDMs. And you're like, how is it? How is it that easy to break our lines? With two CDMs and and the def the amount of defensive players we had on the pitch, and it was just so easy for them to steamroll it through the middle. Painful. You know, there was a there was a there was a point there was a point where they think it was that dumbest when he come on, and he and he just he just run right through the middle of the pit the park. I like two of their players. Yeah, and they're them. They were down to the they were them. down to the fringe players, weren't they? They were down to the. It was only really there was only really that um Elliot Anderson who's who's a kind of a fringe player. That Jacob Jacob um what's his face? <laughs> what's his name? Jacob um Thank you, Amanda. I don't even I can't even think of his name now. Um he, he you know he 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 plays he played pretty often before um Jacob Murphy Eddie came in. Jacob Murphy before Eddie Al came in, he was playing pretty regularly, um, and yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them are still like first teamers. Chad, talk to me about the transitions then. So when we lose the ball up the other pitch, why are we so vulnerable and exposed? And when they lose the ball, why do we slow down the counter attack? And why are we not brave enough to commit players forward to cause an opposition problem? Are we just there to make the numbers up? Yeah. I you you almost wonder what is dice is dice preaching because i see no ambition to go forward when we do win the ball and or I should, it's almost reluctance to move forward or they just switch off um i don't i don't know it it, it can't certainly be the entire team is built like this with this mentality it's got to be preached at 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 some point uh, i i think i think dice is i think dice will take a point from every match going forward, if we can, um, just to keep us safe. And I, I think just his attitude, even if he's not saying it, it's almost like through like osmosis or something like it's, it's a, uh, it's like some professor X 
crap where he they just they're just taking it in from him and they know exactly the way he wants them to play and that's why Pickford when he sees that he's not able to to build it out from the back he's taking it upon himself to boot it long uh even if even if he is booting it to to an an outpaced overmatched Ashley Young on, yeah, on the right yeah Beto, for me, I'm not having any any criticism of him because he looked like a monster. He was getting away from people. And I just think when you're putting it long to him and you're not giving him the chance to, to make an impact, you know, he's going to look poor. Um, but for me, he he worked so hard. It's so frustrating because I think if we won, we, we're not winning the ball up high up the pitch. That's the difference in this 13 games with the transitions. We were winning the ball really high up the pitch and we were just turning teams over mm-hmm. and punishing them. But now we're vulnerable to that at our end and we're not doing it at the other end. Yeah, you're, I think co- that's you're, coming to, you're, you're coming to the end of the season, eight games left, nine games left, you know, before tonight. And the, like, like you said, right, they were, you know, they were, they were high pressing at the start of the season. But when you, when you, your manager's playing the same, the same, players game after game after game because right. he doesn't trust anybody else and he's making subs at 80 85 minutes you know they're going to be dead on the feet they come three quarters of the way well, through the season he made the in fairness today he did make the five substitutions but that leads me into asking chad what do you feel that sean dice goes from one extreme to another where he sets the team up really defensively and then all of a sudden you've got no defensive midfielders on the pitch your fullbacks are bombing forward. You've got two strikers. Where is why does he seem incapable of of having some sort of middle ground and balance? We're either overly defensive or like he's just gone hell for leather. Yeah, it, it's almost like his version of panicking. Because I mean, what was our complaint about Daesh just even a few months ago? Is that he's reluctant to make substitutions, and now we're seeing substitutions as early as 59, 60 minutes, and we're seeing five substitutions like we did today. So. It, to me, I think that's I think that's the most uh, panic that we we've seen out of Sean Dyche. I think he's desperate to get goals, desperate to to find a way to get points. I think, like I said, I think he'll take a nil nil every day of the week and twice on Sunday. But when he knows that we've gone a, a goal down, then then he's searching for answers. And that threadbare squad is there's just there's no answers in it. So he's I think he's trying everything he can within reason. Uh, I don't think I still don't think that would include. Dan Juma, even if he was fit, I don't, I still don't think it would include Dobbin if he was fit. Mm. It's he's, he's still only relying on the same, what, 13 guys to, to, to kind of juice a goal out of. And, and they're just, there's just not enough goals in this side. And he's trying everything again. I would take eight points now. I'd take a point per game for the rest of the season. I think yeah, we'll you, you got to also you got to also factor in that we possibly might get points taken off us. Do you know what I mean? So if we get two, points. I mean, we'll be looking we, to get. No, eight. we're not going to get eight. We're not. We're not going to get eight points, but we could get three or four. So effectively, what you're saying is, we we you'll be happy to take another four points to that season. Another four points is. Well, how many? What are, what points are we on at the moment? Because twenty six. Twenty six. I, I think we will get another six points. I think we'll lose to Liverpool and Arsenal. I think we've got six other games of which we'll draw with Luton, Brentford and Forest. Uh, and then I can't remember who else we play, but we might Burnley, win. Sheffield United. We'll beat and Chelsea. I, beat Burnley. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, let, these fixtures, you couldn't have picked better fixtures in terms of quality of individual. But it's when you add in that context of, oh shit, if we lose, to them, we're giving them the ladder they need to get up. You know, yeah. It, it, Joey, it's, almost, it's almost Joey horrible. Eleven. Joey Eleven just made the point: is, is our game in hand is is the derby. Now, you know, we couldn't have picked the other game in hand unless it was Man City or just Arsenal. And 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 that's the thing is like Luton, Luton will be looking at that thinking, well, that game. That game in hand doesn't really give them anything because the, you know the derbies the, the, Liverpool are head and shoulders above Everton and Everton's home form is absolutely atrocious. So you're like Luton must be thinking well, we're still in it because if Everton get points taken off them and their game in hands against Liverpool, 
then we've got a fighting chance. Do Why am I, mean? I sat here thinking, part of me is like, Luton are going to lose all the games. City, Arsenal, but then they'll beat us. They just will beat us for some reason. I just feel like, you know, when we used to go away from home in the FA Cup or something and you just have like a League One team or a championship team and they were a big bullies and they'd just like get some sort of ridiculous goal off a corner where like smothering us and the VAR turns a blind eye. I feel like Luton will be licking their lips. They'll all be licking their lips. I look at Brentford, they've got Ivan Tony. All they need to do basically is 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 shut up. Teams could easily beat us. All they need to do is play a low block against us mm. and wait for us to lose the ball and run up the other end and score. It's how yeah, we protect our goal in those games. How can we yeah, attack we... and have enough bodies forward to actually cause a threat, but still have enough players back to keep the back door shut? You know, it's one of them, right? Is that if if that goal had gone in, that was cleared off the line by Michalenko. If we got we go two goals behind, we're never coming back from that. Even to get a draw, we're never coming back from that because we lack creativity, we lack goals, we lack players who've got a bit about them. So, you know, when you one nil down, you've got you've also always got a fighting chance. But but with this team, this Everton team, you go if they go two nil down. You seen them when with the goal that was disallowed. The whole. Body language, just the bodies just sunk, and they and they got lucky, like they literally got lucky. They got dodged the bullet there by that being offside. If they're being two 0 we weren't coming back from. They that. were like a bunch of statues, Chad. You, you talked about it. The set pieces, they were in a line, stood motionless. Yeah, they but in a way that worked for us. In a way that worked for us because 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 Isaac went early. Do you know what I mean? So. Kind of like good defending in a way. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, in a way. Did you see Tarkovsky's reaction when when that went in? I think he, I think he knew. I I, I would have to watch it again to see exactly it, exactly what happened. Who was supposed to mark Isaac on that? It was Michalenko. When was it, Miko? I've got these ladies, um, Barcelona women, on just on the TV in front of me, right? Five nil. Five nil. I don't. I don't think it's live, but she's well, knocking really it live. about there. She's got a good touch. She's intelligent. She was them up. It's a good game. She was I'm, looking up. At, I'm looking at this and thinking, how? How? Why aren't we doing this sort of stuff? Look at this. I think, we, I think we should sign them up and, and but don't make Joey Barton our manager. Just send <laughs> it off on me because I said it was ladies. It's the ladies. Go on. I'm going to have to duck out anyway because uh, I've been up since uh, twenty to five this morning. I think this match absolutely calls for light cheat on that tactics board to to digest this, and he will say what I've just said: long ball, huge gaps, press, not cohesive getting done on transition, giving the ball away, Pickford playing into mistake, Beto like a battering ram. Oh, sorry, Dave. Bye, Dave. Bye, Bye. Dave. Bye. <laughs> See you. Beto like a battering ram. And um, I just felt sorry for him, you know, looking at him and thinking, this boy's got so much desire and he's holding them off and he's getting yeah. away from them. And then he's like, I've got no one. Yeah, he he wants it. You could you could see it through the television how much he wants it, and I, I can only imagine. I haven't seen him live I, like you have, Ryan, at Goodison. But you just want to root for him, right? You just really want him to put it in the back of the net because it's all there. He he loves playing for this club, and he works so hard. I, I wish I wish we could find ten other people to put on the on the, the pitch with him that want to play as hard as he He's does. So likable. Um, yeah, and I just feel you were right. What you said with Gomez. Why couldn't you just have someone who can play him in because I feel like if you can play him in, I think he might miss a few of the one V ones, but I think once he gets his mojo, he'll stop. He will come good. I I'm convinced yeah. of it. I don't know about the Calvert Lewin one. I think he, the penalty was kind of like hit and hope, you know, he's hit it hard and, and hoped, but he's nowhere near the corner. And I think if this, the keeper could have saved it, we'd all be sat here smashing 
you know, the TV up and we were, I felt he was going to miss it. I'll be honest. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just have to rip it. Right. I mean, better try to place his and look what happened. Look what happened there. But it was good to see some leadership. Tarkovsky taking the ball and letting Calvert-Lewin stay away from it. And on all the nonsense for Newcastle. And we did do a few things that showed a bit of the brain. Um, I think the in-game management was better. The substitutions was better. I just think, you know, should you always need to rectify things? Should you just get it right the first time? And I don't know. You could say no. Football managers mm -hmm. make mistakes. Yeah, I'd be curious to know that if we didn't just play a few days ago, if he would have made those subs as early as he did. I, I was calling for him at halftime. I wanted to see a, a major shakeup. But, and, and, you know, in combination with just having played a few days ago and then it being Ramadan, did he feel the need to to get Amadou Onana off the pitch or uh, Decore off the pitch when he did? I guess we won't know. Amanda, our new VIP, says if some maybes. It didn't go in. We drew Newcastle going for seventh. It wasn't so bad. Knox is saying a game of two halves. First half, we were awful. Second half, we stepped up. Joey is saying Luton uh, uh, um, have a uh, result, a due one. Uh, Mark says seven days will decide our season. We play three games. Forest, Liverpool, Brentford, very tough. Absolutely correct. Luton are playing Arsenal this weekend. Um, which is good. So maybe hopefully it's a point gained on Luton. It's a bit sad, isn't it? We're sat here fighting a Luton. Um, let's have a look at some of these other starred comments. Oh, just again, major shout out mm -hmm. to Amanda. Thank you so much. She became yeah, thank you, Amanda. And made a personal donation to the channel. Um, so that brings me to ask if you've got any final things. If not, um, I feel this will call for you and 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 Chris's precision analysis as usual in due course. But yeah, I will. We will watch out for a midnight blues. Obviously, Chris and I will, will be trying to get one to you soon. I just Ryan. I just want to watch fun football. I just I <laughs> just want to be I, man. I just want to be entertained. I <laughs> just is that too much to ask? That every once in a while the team that we root for wins. I don't. I don't feel like this is too much to ask. They've got it in them. They won four in a row. There was a brief period where we were winning, draw, losing, and we were looked just competitive. But now this is like some sort of bad run where you just assume because you've, you know, it gets in your head. I mean, the Brighton game was ridiculous. We we should have won that. Um, the Bournemouth game we should have got a draw. There was a couple where we we could have done better, like Spurs away. The, the, in the run, there were some unlucky games, but but these are. I think we should be happy with a point away at Newcastle. Absolutely, I think we have to accept that. That's a really good point, a really good result. In the whole context of the wider season, yes, it's worrying, but I think the games we've got, it's in our hands. We are capable of beating them. The players are good enough. The manager's got to step up and and set up the team as best as he can. Um, and that's all I've got to say. And and again, if you're on Twitter, on X, and I can tell you the exact numbers of people watching this live, 361, of which 325 of you are watching on X. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm a latecomer to the stream. Can I once again politely ask you <laughs> to come over to YouTube, youtube.com forward slash follow Everton, click subscribe. And if you want to take it a step further, you can join and become a VIP. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Do it. Chad, any final thoughts? No, no. I, I, great. I, I'm so glad you were able to jump on. We haven't done a show yet, so this was long overdue. Um, looking forward to doing it again. Looking forward to this weekend. We're going to get three points. Yeah, we should beat Burnley. We should. Up the toffees. Good night. Up the toffees. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Look forward to speaking with you again next time, hopefully in a nice little studio with some de with a decent mic and a decent um, camera. But I'm just happy I've got something that actually is working for now. Um, so, yeah, nice to chat. See you soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Let's get that, Ben. Oh, yeah, we need to get you on admin set up. So we can do that soon. You let me know. Will do. Play the tune.